We're going to talk about Netflix's Terminator Zero and how that thing was pure gold, buddy. What we're going to talk about is basically what you saw on the trailer, and I'm going to share you with my experiences and uh, give you my rating. Terminator Zero was written and developed by Max and Tomlin, best known works as co-writer for The Batman and Project Power. Directed by Masashi Kudo, known for his character design work for Bleach and The Tower of God. Now with Terminator Zero, this is set in 1997, specifically August 28th, the day before Judgment Day, where you find Malcolm Lee, a scientist, developing and trying to convince an AI by the name of Kokoro to help them aid in protecting them from the oncoming Judgment Day that Skynet is ready to bring down. During this time in 2022, a resistance soldier by the name of Aiko is going through a mission herself where she retrieved information that Skynet was going to go back in time to assassinate Malcolm Lee and his children and also take over Kokoro. Production IG did they think. You could definitely see that this was a true Terminator anime. I mean, even a true Terminator story where it was really detailed in the animations. I'm talking about, you saw some gore on there. Like, I liked how um, you could see, again, on the trailer, you could see like the, the, the tear of the skin on the T-800's face. Classic, classic look. And I also loved how the music made you feel that you were actually, you know, watching the old school Terminator. Definitely, definitely love the voice acting. Now, I usually watch anime subtitle, but I watched both, because uh, I watched it more than once. <laughs> I watched it both in English and I watched it both in Japanese. The reason why I was interested in English because I found out that Timothy Oliphant being the Terminator and Rosario Dawson being Kokoro the AI really interested me. So I wanted to see how it matched up. Now, just like most English dub, there's gonna be some translation that kinda doesn't make sense when they say it in English, but it is what it is. You'll overlook it. You could tell that production IG also paid homage to Ghost in the Shell with this specific animation. I'm not going to lie. When I first heard that they were involved, if you've seen Ghost in the Shell, which you can watch Ghost in the Shell on Crunchyroll, uh, it's awesome. Also, you can, I think, rent it on Amazon Prime as well, or it might be on there for free. But definitely check it out if you haven't uh, if you haven't before. I loved how they depicted the Judgment Day through Malcolm Lee's dreams, um, as you saw on the trailer when he's holding his kids, and you see burning away, and you see his eyes and skeleton. Like that was so awesome. Definitely awesome. Now I also appreciate Netflix. Thank you for not making this a hour and a half to two hour anime movie and making it an eight episode 23 minutes of pure gold gold that's what it is action was on point uh i have to give it a stone cold eight out of ten definitely was on point minus a few interactions that'll have you like you know you're stupid those moments you know you'll 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 find out but other than that, great anime. Now, for the most part, you're gonna feel very, very at home with this anime. And the reason why I say at home is because you're gonna notice certain things that paid homage to not only the first Terminator movie, the second Terminator movie, and also, surprisingly, Dark Fate. My favorite uh, part specifically, now I do apologize for the spoilers. I'm not going to tell you too much. Nine times out of ten, you've already seen this in the trailer. One of my favorite parts of the movie is basically when the T-800 in the future that's chasing Ico finds their headquarters. He loses the signature mini cannon, which, you know, was the, the mini cannon from Terminator 2. I mean, it wasn't the exact one from Terminator 2, but you know, 
they, they like I said, going to feel at home with this. He ran out of bullets a while back, and when he found their base, he took two 50 caliber sniper rifles and was dumping. Boom, 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 boom. That part was so crazy to me. So crazy, so crazy. And it reminded me of the first, also it reminded me of the first Terminator when the infiltrator infiltrated the base after Kyle Reese received his mission, you know, and the picture to go do what he had to do. Another scene that you're definitely going to feel at home with is when the T-897, after he loses the kids and the nanny, and oh, by the way, the kids' names are Reka, Hiro, and Kenta, and their nanny is Masaki. Now, after Aiko and Reka split up, Masaki, Kenta, and Hiro, you know, they split up and escaped the T-800. There was a cop that Aiko encountered earlier that called for backup. Now, after, like I said, after they escaped, you see a cop come around in a motorcycle. And the next scene that you see the T-800 in is full cop uniform with the motorcycle, the cop motorcycle, definitely paying homage to the T-1000 on Terminator 2. And I mean, I'm come on now, the T-1000 had have, have people running like, Met crazy that that scene is still legendary now my number one favorite scene pays homage to an iconic scene that kept terminator that, that that was that was brought up in all the terminator movies and i'm talking about yes they did a rendition of the police massacre which was bananas i'm not gonna lie i definitely definitely mess with that now you can watch terminator zero on netflix because it's a netflix exclusive only i definitely you definitely should hop on it i'm not gonna lie it's definitely worth seeing definitely i, I mean I, I got netflix so you know you know i'm gonna watch it <laughs> like share subscribe unlimited mags podcast tv your boy skitty with the anime watch review Tell me what you liked about the movie. Tell me what your favorite part was, what your experience was. Shoot, tell me what your favorite Terminator scene was in the whole franchise. All right, deuces.